Good morning. Good morning, Your Excellency, the First Ladies of Africa. Good morning, Professor Frank Stangerberg Havercom, the Chairperson of America Executive Board and Merck Foundation Board of Trustee. Good morning, First Ladies, uh, technical advisors and staff. Today is a very special day because we have our close meeting together with uh, our ambassador of Merck Foundation, More Than a Mother campaign. I'm very honored to have you today here. Today is a very special uh, meeting because this is the first closed committee meeting uh, after coronavirus. I think the last committee meeting was in Accra, in Ghana, where Her Excellency, the First Lady of Ghana, Madame Rebecca Akufo Adu, uh, invited us and hosted us for our seventh edition of Merck Foundation Africa Asia Luminary. And of course, during that meeting in Accra, in Ghana in 2019, which today we are 2022, we had um, a lot of um, following up on our programs and uh, impact. And uh, of course, it was following the plenary session and the inauguration session of um, the day before, where every first lady has uh, introduced and presented the impact of Merck Foundation partnership uh, and programs in her country. And I was very uh, much impressed and proud and delighted to hear yesterday all the improvement that we have done, not only from the start of our partnership, but also during the coronavirus pandemic, which everyone was expecting that it will slow us down and will not uh, make us continue with our vision because and, and our mission because everyone was focusing on emergency strategy of uh, corona um, pandemic um, safety and health aspects and so on uh, but because we believed in the strategy of building healthcare capacity since 2012 actually this proved that our strategy was really the correct strategy and it was strong one and everyone now understand the impact of uh, developing and advancing the healthcare sector especially the public sector therefore the focus on our programs was even more uh, stronger and more impactful and everyone from our ambassadors of the first ladies was really focusing very very um, uh, hard and in a special way to make the programs even more successful because we introduced also the online uh, master degree and diploma in more than 32 medical specialty which is underserved and critical for Africa so uh, uh, it was actually um, defeating the challenge that, of course, nobody can travel, nobody can study abroad. So this online uh, uh, training, and it was very sophisticated in very many universities in UK, uh, even the one we introduced in French and Portuguese and Spanish, it was actually produced by South Wales University in UK. So it was really uh, uh, impactful and uh, helped uh, many of the doctors to develop their uh, skills and their speciality and to be the first specialist in their country. Uh, and going alphabetically from Z to A today, uh, when I heard, of course, the, um, the speech and the talking points of Her Excellency, the First Lady of um, uh, Zambia, and uh, uh, of course, uh, we just know each other uh, recently, like we and uh, we appointed Her Excellency with a great honor for us to be an ambassador of uh, Merck Foundation more than a mother in um, September. Uh, we started our program, but we started very active even from, 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 the, from the first day. We had the education, educating Linda, educating girls, which is very important. And we, we here commit that Merck Foundation will continue supporting the education of the girls. But also, I believe that meeting the technical advisors uh, with our uh, team uh, and, uh, on the 14th of this month before uh, the luminary uh, will also implement the building healthcare capacity and continuation of the scholarships 
uh, that we are going to provide for doctors in the public sector of uh, healthcare, which uh, uh, we provided until now 80 uh, scholarships, and we want to continue with more because this is going to transform the patient uh, care landscape in the country. So thank you very much, Your Excellency, for being with us here today. And we will continue, and I am sure next year we will have a lot of things to report, a lot of videos and pictures to showcase for people what we've done together. So thank you very much. And uh, of course, uh, my dear uh, sister and long-term partner, Her, Her Excellency, the First Lady of uh, Sierra Leone, um, congratulations for the resolution, resolution of UN for uh, supporting and uh, uh, the victims and the survivor of uh, rape. Uh, I visited Sierra Leone two months ago and I was impressed of course with all the great work she's doing to support girls and women, especially hands off our girls uh, campaign. And also uh, the Hospital 34, which is she establishing uh, to accommodate the uh, trainees and the scholars scholarships we provided for the doctors uh, of Sierra Leone, which is 45, uh, 46 by today uh, scholarships for, for doctors in oncology, but also in many other uh, specialties like reproductive care and sexual care and uh, diabetes and uh, um, cardiovascular preventive. And this hospital which, with the 500 beds will help very much also transform the patient care and access of the patient of Sierra Leone uh, to equitable and quality healthcare solution. We will support that and also we will support uh, our programs uh, with you and continue training uh, the doctors in Sierra Leone and uh, uh, empowering uh, girls and, and women through our awareness campaign and through your social media, of course, platform which is booming and uh, uh, all this will uh, will be a great uh, impact. So thank you very much for uh, having us in between your trips. The one you got the resolution and the one you're going to meet the Vatican uh, tomorrow. So, so thank you very much for squeeze uh, our uh, meeting in between um, and congratulations. And my dear sister, the First Lady of Namibia, I thank you very much for summarizing yesterday and listening very well to all the speeches and coming up with uh, the uh, each uh, highlight of each country. Uh, I also thank you very much for coming uh, to us in, during your birthday, which is a uh, very, <laughs> uh, very important uh, day, but, uh, and you never leave uh, the country during your birthday, and you did it for us, for Merck Foundation, so thank you very much for this special treatment. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your involvement uh, personally in infertility and having the platform to speak to women and to men and couples and address the psychological uh, factor besides the medical uh, uh, factor, which is very important, and uh, trying to break the taboo about certain wording and terminologies used in an uh, African uh, uh, continent in general and uh, in Namibia, so people will understand that this is not a taboo and not a stigma and it's not correct to treat uh, women with living with infertility or couples living with infertility with that stress and psychological uh, stress and um, and uh, abuse actually so this is uh, really important but also we started uh, after our partnership with a very important program which is also building healthcare capacity and providing scholarships which was not uh, taking off at all before we joined uh, our partnership, we started our partnership. So now we have almost uh, 40 scholarships provided to Namibian doctors, whose local doctors in the public sector, with specialty training in around 32 speciality. They're doing all very well. And uh, before that, the speciality, the specialist was only in the private sector and mostly maybe uh, foreigner like uh, South African and other uh, nationalities and few Namibian. But I think this transformation will made amazing um, addition to the healthcare in Namibia and uh, for patients and communities and families. So thank you very much for making this happen because this will never happen without her support, definitely. So thank you very much. And uh, for Her Excellency, the First Lady of Mozambique, thank you very much for coming uh, to us in our meeting in, um, 
uh, after uh, Corona, well, long time. The last time we met, it was in 2019 uh, in uh, Mafli. And uh, I promise that we are coming to visit uh, Mozambique to launch our programs. But I would like to thank you also for contributing to the community awareness through your team. Uh, regarding the media awards and uh, the other awards that we are doing to raise awareness about breaking the stigma on fertility and educating girls, uh, girls' education and the storybooks we distributed. By the way, everything we do, we have to translate to French and Portuguese by default. So all our programs or our stories, even the song we heard yesterday, we had Blaze from Mozambique, which is a singer from Mozambique, to do the, uh, the diabetes song and other uh, songs about girls' education. So this, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, Her Excellency, uh, the First Lady of Malawi, uh, yes, so we uh, thank you very much for being with us and thank you very much for the continuous communication between me and you on uh, WhatsApp regarding our programs. I'd like very much your passion about infertility and how you actually inviting everyone that was, was our programs in Merck Foundation, either doctors who graduated from the scholarships or uh, uh, the uh, educating uh, the girls' education and the scholars of the girls' education and uh, the fertile couples and the women that uh, suffer infertility to the state house from time to time to have a dialogue with them and to encourage them to speak up and to figure out the things that you want to include in, uh, in your program. This is very important for us. Also, your involvement to distribute the education uh, scholarships and the storybooks and the school items. So uh, actually, thank you very much for, for this active uh, contribution. We had a challenge before you joined that for the scholarships of the doctors and uh, you already convinced the doctors that this is very important because I was expecting that when we offer the scholarships, there is a lot of doctors will come, but you didn't want to uh, apply at all. And then she called them to the state house and convinced them how this scholarship is very important for them as a career and for the country. So they start to apply and now they're doing very well. But before they didn't want, correct? So thank you very, very much, Your Excellency, for that. Um, Her Excellency, the First Lady of Liberia, uh, thank you very much for um, all the things you are doing for the girls in the library and for women. We started the sanitary towel uh, uh, manufacturing program, but also we started the scholarships for uh, doctors. And it's really impressive that we have now 21 scholarships we've provided for doctors and the first specialist in many country in many specialty in Liberia, like oncology, like diabetes and uh, cardiovascular respiratory and ICU. And we are hoping to have even more uh, specialty. And of course, girls' education and uh, the scholarships we provided for girls. So thank you very much for, for, for this and uh, for acknowledging uh, our work and myself uh, during the speech, your speech. Thank you very much for that. And I hope that we continue and we come to Liberia also to visit. Uh, your Excellency, the First Lady of Ghana, I'd like to thank you for many things. First, of course, hosting the luminary in 2019, which was an amazing memory and actually something that we cannot even um, aspire to uh, to make similar because it was really lovely it was lovely uh, we enjoyed it so much and it was our last one before corona so the memory is still uh, <laughs> vision like still life even now so and of course uh, for all the um, uh, active contribution for yourself and your team they are doing great things and I like very much the idea which I copied the, um, the TV program uh, because I want to be and I knew how this makes a big difference in uh, social media and uh, the girls that uh, listen to it and inspire them to continue their education and to make more you know of their career reach their potential so we started also our program which is our Africa by Merck Foundation, where we address in this TV program all the uh, wide range of social and uh, health aspects, uh, everything from infertility to child marriage to FGM and through fashion and art. 
because I know that our fashion and art is very important for all Africa and it can really influence and have a critical role. So we copied this idea because we find it very, very uh, successful and we broadcast it even in Ghana, in Kenya, in Sierra Leone, in uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe, in many, many countries, like nine countries now and people are really, uh, the young people are really listening to it and uh, making a, a great um, contribution, comments and stuff. This is what, how we create culture shift. But of course, the scholarships also, we provided 112 scholarships for doctors. And this is really great also uh, with your support uh, because it, they trust, of course, the, the work of the First Lady Office and so on. So thank you very, very much, uh, Your Excellency. Um, Her Excellency, uh, the First Lady of the Gambia. Uh, I can't, we started in 2017 in Cairo, was the first attendees on, um, for, uh, as a guest of honor for our first luminary, where we, st we launched Merck Foundation for the first time. So you are long-term partner for many, many, many years, and we achieved a lot of things, and you always support me even to introduce Merck Foundation to uh, new first ladies, and I appreciate that very much. I appreciate also your attention to this disability, to fistula, to uh, fertility, infertility, to uh, uh, building healthcare. You said that you have 150 applicants for doctors this year. So it's your involvement with each ministry is uh, it's a very uh, appreciative and um, we are supporting that. And we always meet and we discuss new programs and how we support. So thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, Your Excellency, the First Lady of the Dem Democratic Republic of Congo, thank you for joining us for the first time in our luminary. I hope that you're enjoying it and it's, it's, it's good uh, um, and you join the next and the next and the next. And thank you very much. We met in 2020 during Corona and once you joined and since then we started our programs very strongly and we want to even continue more and more. We've done a lot in girls' education, the awards of the media recognition, which is our two many winners from uh, from uh, Congo, and uh, of course the scholarships for diabetes, which is more than 35 by now. So of course we want to continue more, and we want to add more uh, to our uh, programs and our portfolio. And we meet, I'm sure we meet next year in uh, Kinshasa with uh, her, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Frank Stangerberg have her come so we can launch our programs as well. So uh, thank you very much for being with us uh, today. Uh, her Excellency, the First Lady of Burundi, I would like to thank you so much. One, once for the beautiful song that your daughter made uh, lucky and uh, dedicated for us uh, and sang it herself uh, about um, more than a mother and uh, thank you also for the first public IVF that she established in Burundi first public IVF which I think the first public IVF in, in, in sub-Saharan East Africa which is very important and very difficult because I know that it's 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 you know, there is a lot of uh, challenges to achieve this, but we trained all the stuff. But also establishing the mental health uh, 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 hospital that you uh, are going to establish and the Fistla treatment hospital. You show me these three hospitals, it's great achievement. So thank you very much for this, but also your contribution to girls' education and distributing the scholarships on doctors and uh, the awards. So uh, thank you and congratulations. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> of course, I will not miss uh, Her Excellency, uh, the First Lady of Botswana. She came also during her birthday and she's very interested and, but she has to leave to, to, today uh, for a school, uh, her, girl, uh, her um, daughter's school uh, obligation. Uh, but I would like to thank her uh, for uh, her contribution to the scholarships as well of the doctors, but also her contribution towards stopping GBV, gender-based violence. She's very passionate about this uh, topic. So we contributed with her in this as well. And of course, as you said, the uh, building fertility care capacity in the public sector. So it's very important. 
who's not with us also uh, today is Central African Republic. Uh, I will not miss her, uh, mentioning her and um, uh, wish her uh, good health. Uh, she's out abroad, I, as we said, couldn't attend, but she attended with us since 2016. Uh, every year, every year, continuously. So I thank her very much for her support and all the work she does for fertility and other, other work. Her Excellency, the First Lady of Zimbabwe, also uh, she's not uh, here today, but we worked so hard and I visited uh, Zimbabwe and we worked so hard about also building healthcare capacity and girls' education, as well as Her Excellency, the First Lady of Nigeria. She couldn't come today because she is engaged in the election. She is sending a message to all of you, saying that she's sorry that she was not uh, being able to be here today, but it's out of her hand, and she sends her regards to all of you. So uh, I thank her as well for all the uh, hard work that uh, we are doing uh, together. Uh, I think I did not miss, uh, First Lady of Angola, thank her very, very much for um, uh, joining us online yesterday, although she is very busy in her election. Uh, as well, uh, and uh, to have the um, the contribution and uh, the speech, although there was a little technical uh, things, but we uh, going to translate all this and put it on the social media and send it to all of you, so you can you can hear. We will continue uh, our, my meeting with the technical advisors of Angola today, so we can start our programs very actively. I finished. And I would like now to thank you all of you and also to invite Professor Frank Steinberg have come for a small keynote that he wants to address uh, all of you. I just wanted to summarize this uh, for all of us because I want it also to be recorded for the social media and everyone who couldn't attend yesterday or have difficulty to hear, they will understand what we are doing together. Thank you very much, uh, Russia. <clears throat> I'm talking a bit out, out of the program, I have to admit, uh, but it's very close to my heart to say some words. Uh, I listened very carefully yesterday to your different statements in the big meeting, and I must say uh, everyone, every each of you, uh, said something which really went down extremely well because it showed the personal commitment you all have in getting our cause forward to get a better life for everybody possible, and particularly for women. You know, my heart is very much in Africa since I spent my honeymoon some now 50 years ago. Now you know how old I am in Namibia in those days. It was a lovely time I had. Uh, and from then on, I always have been a very great fan, not only of um, um, Namibia, of all countries, of course. Yeah. Ten years ago, we uh, started thinking about how could we extend our philanthropic work in Africa. You know, we have been involved with the WHO for many years in fighting uh, bilatiosis in Africa, and we are seeing more and more success in that respect. Um, and uh, then we came up with the idea that we should really do something for African women. I think that was a, the, the core of it, because I traveled Africa extensively and I saw that the main cause why Africa is really functioning, it's ticking, it's mainly by the women. And I really say this with the full support of my heart. If you travel in a land cruiser through Africa, you see women everywhere, on the field, sitting at the, at the street, selling and market stands and so on. I will not tell you what the, what the men are doing during those times, but that's something different. You know it all. They're also working, of course. Uh, so. That was when the whole idea of providing funding for uh, what at the end turned out to be the Merck Foundation. We were very fortunate that we found a, a CEO which is very forceful, very strong-minded, and really, I don't know, I don't want to mention any name, of course, um, but we all know who it is, and uh, of course she is a part of the success of it. But the biggest part of the success uh, are you, the First Ladies. Without, I really mean it, and uh, I always tell my colleagues also in Darmstadt, you see, every, uh, every dollar, every pound sterling, every euro spent in this course is worthwhile because the support of the First Ladies in Africa makes this success possible. Look at all the NGOs that spent billions over the years, yeah, with hardly the same success we have with, the, with our budget and with your help. And I really would like to thank you from my deepest heart that you do it. It's not a natural thing to do, 
But of course, you use your position as first ladies in the best possible way. And that's something very unique to Africa as well. A first lady in Europe hasn't got that, that, that power, and that influence, uh, but you have it and you use it well. So thank you very much for that. And please continue doing so. We will support you as good as we can. Thank you. Today we have uh, our uh, tradition that we uh, read together a storybook that uh, support one of the causes. Last time we read uh, David's story, it was to support infert breaking the fertility stigma and raising awareness about infertility uh, for children since, uh, since young age, from young age, and um, to uh, establish a strong family uh, value of love and respect for children and young people who read this story. This was their story. Today we have two stories that are really, really uh, important for uh, good education and uh, ending child marriage. The Jacqueline Rescue to support their education and end child marriage and arrive into the future to support their education. So uh, we will um, read uh, Jacqueline Rescue. So the start with me and then we will go I'm basically from first lady of Zambia till uh, the first lady of Burundi. Okay. It's a bright sun Tuesday morning. And the first lesson of the day is underway of the village primary school. The teacher, Mrs. Aisha, is testing her students' understanding of topic they treated a day before. Mrs. Aisha, Aisha, who can tell me the square root of 81 multiplied by 7? Anyone? Anyone? Yes, great. Me, madam. It's 12, madam. No, great. 12 is not the correct answer. Who else? I know. It's 13. And how did you arrive at that? Um, I don't, I'm not sure, madam, but Grace said 12, and you said it was, it was wrong, so I wanted to try 13. So, so now, square root has turned into a fighting number in ascender three, ascender three. Are you serious, Robert? As the class continues to lunch, the hand gently goes out in the back of the classroom. Me, madam? Yes, the Are you about to make any meaningful contribution? Or would you be telling the answer is 14? <laughs> no, madam. The square root of H1 is 9 and 9 multiplied by 7 squares. 7 equals 6 threes. Wonderful. That is amazing, I think. Give us a round of applause. <laughs> that is what happened. Thanks, Jacqueline. He just said it was. Ha 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 ha. This is a pride, Jacqueline. A brilliant time self motivated 15 year old school girl carries with her almost every day of her life. Thanks. Yay. We are proud of you. Jacqueline's usual working part back home seems more interesting today. For the first time as she walk past the village community hospital. She noticed the hard-working, smartly dressed medical staff going about their work. The ones attending to the mothers and children killed at the center got most of her attention. She couldn't help but notice the passion with which the nurses carried out their duties, seeing to needs of the seeing to needs of the malnourished, malnourished looking children. In a brief moment, Jacqueline's picture herself in the future, smartly dressed up in a doctor's uniform and happily attending to mothers and children in a big hospital. Hey, what are you thinking about? I ask, I ask what you were thinking about. Oh, 
Joseph, Joseph's fanci fanciful dream of being a doctor from kids. A pediatrician, you mean? Yes, working at a big hospital. That's a wonderful big dream. And dreams do happen, you know. At a young age, Jacqueline fully understands that this kind of dream can be achieved only through hard work. She has also grasped the harsh economic and financial realities of her family. Yes, I believe so. I need to work hard to make it happen. Despite all the potential stumbling blocks in her way, she is determined to finish her education to pursue this newfound dream. See you tomorrow. Don't forget to study for the test. Yes, Jacqueline, thanks. Early the next morning, just before setting out to school, Jacqueline's distressed looking father called her to sit and have a very important talk with her. Jacqueline, come over here and have a seat. We need to talk. We've been trying hard to see you through your education, but I can no longer afford to do so. I have run out of money. Most of your school fees I've been paying have been borrowed money. Now I must pay back. Okay, father, but why are you telling me this? What would you have me do about it? Nothing. At this point, your mother and I have no choice but to marry you to Papa Sadiq. Assim conseguiremos dinheiro do, de, do, teu, do seu dote para cuidar de nós mesmos e do teu irmão mais novo. Casamento? Pai, o que é isso? Mãe, do que ela está, está a falar? Não entendo. Por favor, explique. Desculpe, minha filha. Tu vais entender quando chegares lá. Acredita em mim, minha filha. É para o bem de todos nós. Mas ainda não entendi. Eu sou apenas uma criança. Isso seria tudo. Prepara-te para o teu casamento na próxima semana. Por favor, pai. O que vai acontecer comigo agora? Com medo de fazer mais perguntas, Jacqueline sai correndo de casa e começa a chorar tanto quanto as suas jovens pernas podem levá-la. Ela corre para a senhora Isha, sua professora. Talvez ela pudesse ajudá-la a entender o que o seu pai acabara de dizer. O que é isso, Jacqueline? A senhora Isha estava a preparar-se para ir à escola quando Jacqueline irrompeu em seu complexo com lágrimas escorrendo pelo rosto inocente. Meu pai disse que não, não pode mais pagar as minhas propinas escolares, então ele vai casar-me. Casar? O quê? Isto não, é, não está certo. O, o casamento não é para crianças. Vou ter que falar com seu pai contra este plano. Mrs. Aisha sends Jacqueline back home with a promise to visit right after sorting out her students for the morning lesson. When she went inside, she was met with unpleasant surprise. Uncle Sadiq is here to marry you. See all the bride price. Jacqueline, come over here. Today is your lucky day. When Jacqueline got home, she saw a car parked in front of the house. Sorry for the sudden appearance. I felt I needed to get this off the list to enable me to attend to other uh, activities. Here is a little cash for all the inconvenience caused. Oh my God. Ha ha ha. Darling, quickly get Jacqueline a dress to change. She's leaving for the city right away. What, Father? I can't wait to start my new life with my beautiful bride. Cheer up, my sweetheart. You'll be fine. Mrs. Aisha, how I wish you were here. It was time to set off. We wish you both well. Sadly, Jacqueline found herself driven away from home. I can't believe this. It's, I can't believe this is happening to me. I feel so hopeless.
Soon they were in the big city. 15-year-old Jacqueline begins her strange new life with her 35-year-old husband. Jacqueline, darling, it's time to wake up to your household calls. I am late for work. She's suddenly thrown into an adult world where she has to do things she used to see her mother do for her father. I cannot believe I'm having to do all of this on a daily basis, cleaning, washing, cleaning and washing of clothes, ironing, going to the market and cooking for the house. I was never prepared for this. How do I endure this in addition to his physical abuse? I am so stressed out. She would often cry all day after her husband leaves for work. Schooling was out of the question, and as the days go by, her hopes and dreams of becoming a pediatrician is dashed against the wall. Oh my God, help me. This is not the future I had in mind. I can't go, I can't go on like this. I feel so abused and tired. Meanwhile, back in the village, Jacqueline's teacher, Mrs. Aisha, has not given up on rescuing and returning her to school. She has managed to gain the support of a few influential members of the community. Early child marriage is not only harmful to our children's health and well-being, but also locks the girl's future in poverty. Without education, a girl's potential to get good jobs in the future to support their families is reduced. At what age is it safe to marry our girls off? At least from 18 years, when their bodies would be reasonably matured enough to handle the stress of marriage. Early marriage will force them out of education, increasing their risk of ill health, <coughs> violence, and abuse. No way, that's not the kind of future I want for my girl child, never. Soon it became all clear to the community gathering that the best way to protect the child and break the cycle of family poverty would be to keep the girl child in school. We have a responsibility to protect our children, especially the girls. I would not entertain anyone pushing any girl into marriage before 18 years from this day forth. The rapturous applause that followed the chief's speech put hope and a big smile on Mrs. Aisha's face. With, the new, with this new mindset of people coupled with the local police involvement, it didn't take long to Jack, get Jacqueline's father to succumb. I feel so sorry and res, irresponsible as a parent for having sent our daughter into early marriage. This can be fixed. The earlier you show us where they lived in the city, the safer it might be for Jacqueline. Uh, Mrs. Isa, together with the police, traveled to the city earlier the next morning. I think this should be the house officer. Let's knock the door to see if anyone is at home. Meanwhile, inside the house, come here, you little useless girl. This is how your mother taught you to iron a dress. Oh, please, it hurts. Shut up. I will show you what really hurts. Ha! Who could that be so early this morning? Ha! It's the police. Are you Mr. Sadiq? No, I am not. Hey, you stop. Mrs. Isa, you, mm -hmm. you come to my rescue. I am so grateful. That's all right, my dear. You don't deserve this abuse or ever. Come, now, let's go home. The law will deal well with Mr. Sadiq. Je suis si heureuse d'être libre du mariage des enfants. Aucune fille dans ce pays n'a besoin de subir cet abus. Sophie, une glorieuse fête de retour dans le quartier. Hi, les amis. C'est Madame Aïcha et Jacqueline. Elles sont de retour. Les camarades de classe et amis de Jacqueline s'étaient tous réunis chez eux pour l'accueillir à nouveau. Quant à 
te voir, Jacqueline. Vous nous avez tellement manqué. Vous m'avez tout manqué aussi. Un grand, merci, un grand merci pour toutes vos prières et votre soutien. Après avoir considéré les tourments et les traitements indignes qu'elle a dû subir, l'école et le chef du village lui ont réservé un cadeau spécial. Le conseil de l'école et moi-même avons décidé de vous offrir bourse complète. Les filles comme vous méritent tout le soutien nécessaire pour avoir un avenir meilleur. Oh mon Dieu, je ne peux pas le croire. Jacqueline était ravie, en fait. Elle pouvait faire ce qu'elle avait toujours voulu faire. Oui, je suis de retour à l'école. C'est tellement génial. Some years later, Jacqueline completes her primary and secondary education with flying colors. Finally, I made it here. I'm going to equally study hard to graduate with a first class and proceeds to higher education. When she later graduates as a qualified pediatrician, her dream job. Yes, I made it. Alongside her profession, Jacqueline decides to turn her expertise and skills in cooking into a real business. She sets up Jackie Chow, an NGO back in the village with a special goal of catering for malnourished kids in the neighborhood. Occasionally, she runs a mobile clinic in the community to offer free health and screening sessions for families. It was her way of saying a big thank you for the rescue and support. Finish this meal and quickly head to the screening center. We want to make sure you are a healthy ch children. You are all healthy children. Yes, Auntie Jacqueline, thank you so much. A story of child marriage, written and illustrated by Jones Aban. The story is in three languages and it will be put on the social media and websites and also distributed uh, uh, as hard copies in each country for students. Now we will start right into the future. It's a bright school day again and most of the children in the community are off early for classes. As usual, Grace, a young bright girl can only look from the corridor of her home. Oh God, how I wish I was also dressed in my uniform to join them go to school. Grace, where are you? You are running late. The boy must return to uh, Ma'am Siroa. Yes, mother. And what is with the dropping face? Mother, when can I, when can I also join my friends too? Don't, don't Grace, we have discussed this already. Aside from the financial constraints, I have told you the walking distance to school is way too long and dangerous for a child like you. But I wish to go to school, mom, and I become an engineer one day. That schooling and engineering ambitious can rest for now. You do as I say, pick the items and off you go. Grace suddenly leaves the house and makes her way to the town center to deliver the goods. All I want is to be in school. How long will I continue to be left behind? There you go, and Sarah. Thank you, Grace, regards to your mother. The whole morning, as usual, was spent on errands, household chores, a retro break and matures. Soon school is over and most of the kids are returning home. Hello Grace, we are back. Hope to see you soon. Sure, consider me there. Great, we have some new books you must be interested in. That evening at Grace's at Beatrice's home, so what's the answer to this one? It's Egypt. 
oh wow, you know the answer. That's incredible, thanks. You are smart and I am wondering why you are still not in school, Grace. Well, hmm, it's a long story, Beatrice, but I'm hopeful that one day this will pass. I really look forward to that. Soon, it was time to go. All right, it's running late. I need to go home. Sure, it's always been fun studying with you. Bye, Grace. Early the next day, Grace wakes up to the noise of excited kids in the neighborhood. It's Saturday. I wonder what could be so exciting out there at this time. It's Abeko, a visitor to the town having some fun with the children taking turns on his bicycle. Ha ha, you fell again. Okay, that's enough. Let me show you how to ride, hands free. Mommy, can I go play with my friends outside, please? Sure, right after your morning chores. Quickly, Grace gets the chores out of the way. Abeku spots Grace staring at them from a distance. Would you like to try your luck riding? No way, she's a girl. She can't ride. We couldn't. Well, who knows? She still can give it a shot. Would you? What a man can do, a woman can do better. Happy falling. Ha ha ha. Let's see how she falls. Ride on. Observe me, rapazes. Vou, aquela, vou para aquela árvore e volto. Ha, ha, ha. Deus misericordioso. A menina está a andar de bicicleta. Ha, 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 ha. Adoro isso. Vá à Grécia. Mostra aos meninos como fazer. Oh, meu Deus. Ela anda de bicicleta, de facto? Na verdade, Grécia está a fazer o que os meninos não conseguiram fazer. Ela cavalga confortavelmente. Isto é inacreditável. Ela cavalga como especialista. Como, como isso foi? Cresce incrível. Bateste os meninos a andar de bicicleta? Surpreendeste a todos nós com a tua habilidade? Eu não acredito nisso. Podes fazer isso de novo? Ha, ha, ha. Certo. Por que não? Grace picks herself on the back and once again turns away even further and with more confidence. The boys ha had no choice than to follow her with cheers and jubilations. Yo ho, yes! Hoorah! This is awesome. The first female bike rider in town. <laughs> Soon it was time to return to the big city Everybody was sad. Just when they were getting used to Abeku and the fun he brought to the kids, he had to leave. I have a little surprise for you, Grace. My mom has permitted me to gift you with this bike. Oh, wow. We learned you are a smart kid, but having challenges to go uh, to school due to the distance. We hope you find this gift useful? Absolutely. I'm so speechless, Sabe. Thank you so much. Mother, I guess the worry over long distance issue is over. I can now start <coughs> going to school. Absolutely, my girl. The bike indeed was a blessing. Now she can not just ride to school to get an education, but also run a few more errands for the family with much ease. I will drop off these items before heading to school. I can't be late again, ha ha. Grace soon became popular in school and would, and would be found giving a few of her friends a ride home after school. I must say, your daughter really looks different. She looks empowered. Yes, and she has been so popular earning a nickname, the girl on the red bike. Imagine that. She, she, she's also been helping other children remain punctual at school with that bike. I am so grateful for that gift. It just unearthed so much potential in my daughter. 
You could have easily missed this if you had continued keeping her at home. Education is really the best thing for our children. She feels so liberated. I have a feeling the bicycle will help her complete her education and prepare her better for jobs in the future. Girl child education really has far more benefits than we assume. Oh yes, not to forget the vicious cycle of having to live hand to mouth. Indirectly, poverty will not be knocking at my family doorstep. Ha ha ha, thanks to education. Yes, oh, ha ha ha. Indeed, with that gift, Grace managed to successfully ride through her primary to secondary education. She passed and qualified for higher education in the city. Another good news, mother, I have passed with flying colors. I am heading for higher education. That's my daughter. I am so proud of you. I have no doubt you are going to sail through all the challenges ahead. Life in the city will be quite different. We need to prepare our list of items to buy to prepare you for the next phase of your education. Thank you so much, mother. I am truly grateful for your support. Quelques semaines plus tard, Grace et sa mère étaient en ville. Ils en ont profité pour rencontrer Abeko et sa mère. Je dois dire que votre prévenance a vraiment aidé ma fille à terminer ses études. Nous sommes heureux d'entendre cela. Abeiko m'a dit qu'elle était une enfant intelligente. Le mieux que nous puissions faire était ce cadeau. Contrairement à beaucoup d'autres, Grace est arrivée à l'école moins fatiguée, concentrée en classe, ponctuelle au quotidien. Cela l'a vraiment aidé à améliorer ses performances. Nous sommes heureux du chemin parcouru. J'ai cru en toi le jour où Abeiko m'a placé devant toi. Tu m'as vraiment donné raison. Va finir tes études et sois ce que tu aspires à être. Je vais, Madame, merci beaucoup. Même si Grace s'est retrouvée dans une classe dominée par les hommes, elle n'a pas été découragée. En fait, elle s'est avérée prise, plus dure élève à battre pour les positions les mieux notées dans la plupart des matières. Oh mon Dieu, cette fille est brillante. Je n'ai jamais rencontré une fille aussi intelligente que celle-ci. Son succès et sa réussite en tant qu'étudiant de première classe n'ont pas été une surprise. Grace est devenue une, une ingénieure à succès après avoir obtenu son diplôme universitaire. She never forgot her roots. She always went back to the town twice a year to support more students into education by donating bicycles to the school children. Bicycles will help children commute safer to school, keep them in school, improve students' performance, increase self-esteem, especially among girls. I was empowered to sail through my education with a bike. It is my hope and dream that these gifts will do the same for all the children here, especially the girl child. There is a rapturous applause from the gathering. I really am inspired. I will make sure my girl child gets educated to become like her one day. Grace beams with smiles as she looks on at a girl attempting to ride the bike for the first time. You can do it, girl. My mom tells whatever I focus to do, I can do it. That's right, dear, keep the hope alive. With determination, a girl can do and become anything she dreams of. Just keep riding on. So what do you think about the stories? It's good? <laughs> So we will distribute this and we have other stories also but we're not reading of course it but just to give you an idea what they are of course we all know that David's story from last time and also educating Linda and make the right choice we've done in during coronavirus it's about raising awareness about coronavirus but also about honesty and loyalty and, and uh, work there's another one which is uh, Jude sugar-free it's a very good one for diabetes 
and for children specifically who get diabetes because of ob obesity or bad um, uh, habits of non-exercising, it's really re good raising awareness to prevent diabetes very much uh, or manage it properly. And uh, um, not who you are, it's about gender-based vi domestic violence. It's also very, very nice one about um, a, a husband who abused his uh, wife and then they come back after um, to happiness and uh, to respect her and ab appreciate her. It's really also nice and it's been made in a very nice way for children so they can understand how to respect their future uh, wives and future women in their life. So I think we... Uh, yeah. Sorry? Yes. The advocacy should start from children because they are the future generation so that they will be adopting to what exactly we went through before. They will not make the mistakes that we meet. Exactly, because it's also very easy to mold them when they are mm -hmm. uh, young yeah. still and uh, before the character is formed totally. Because it's very difficult sometimes to change adults. So if um, uh, anyone, please feel free if you want to comment about anything. No? Dr. Frank, you want to? Uh, after this, yeah. in the books, this is what I said. I mean, uh, the um, not who you are and you uh, sugar free, and uh, the last three uh, stories and these two stories. So this is uh, I'm, I'm, we are doing one about hypertension also, okay. which is very well, also very very good. Uh, if they keep uh, themselves healthy since uh, ch uh, childhood, I'm sure it will uh, be a lifestyle and they will continue. Mm -hmm. And we complement that with the songs and with the awareness materials and um, the other things like the media awards. Uh, you know all we have the media awards now about uh, healthy lifestyle and how to prevent diabetes and hypertension. We encourage media to write about these things, these topics. So that's it. So um, Dr. Frank, can you please close the, close the meeting? I think we finished. Thank you all for attending. Uh, I know it was not always easy to come from all parts of Africa or even New York, so it's always a long trip. Uh, but it was worthwhile. I think it's very important to have this sort of meeting simply to exchange views and to agree on the next step forwards. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing all of you, hopefully also the first ladies who couldn't come next year, and we will decide where we will meet. I don't know whether yes. you have got any idea already on that respect. We will do voting for that, yeah. Yeah, we we'll work on that. So, safe uh, travel back home, and please, please continue the good work. I think um, Africa, in particular the girls, will benefit from it. Yes. And by the way, you see, I've got two granddaughters and three daughters, <coughs> and all uh, right, the problems are a bit different, but still, they also have to struggle in a, in a male world, also in Europe, so there's no that much difference in that respect. Yes. So, uh, I've got my full sympathy, whatever we do. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Professor Frank. There's one thing only, Dr. Uh, Her Excellency, the First Lady of Bronte, uh, uh, gave us a, a gift uh, of uh, her um, daughter uh, song, and she wants to play it to us. So if you don't mind, just it takes two minutes. Yeah. Yes, please. Tu n'as pas été créé 
uniquement pour être maman. Tu t'as doté d'un multitalent, tu es plus qu'une mère. Tes tâches ne se limitent pas de mettre un monde seulement ou de prendre en charge les enfants. Mais dans la bénédiction, tu es le mot de l'admirable. Dans l'éducation, tu es la femme de valeur intellectuelle. Tu es plus qu'une mère. Tu es plus qu'une mère. Tu es plus qu'une mère. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.